VH1 Mondays. They scan their way to the top. Credit card game is buy and sell, buy and sell. But the higher they rise, money was coming in like it was raining. The harder they fall. The DA starts to move in. I take off running. I'm a hustler, we know. Monday, August 29th. I was gonna lose my home. Real stories of crime and redemption told by the hustlers who lived it. I had to get out this street life. My true crime story, narrated by me, Remy Ma, premieres Monday, August 29th at 10, following a new episode of Love and Hip Hop Miami. All right. Oh, duh. <laughs> Good, Good morning. morning Jeff. How are you? I'm doing great, Remy. Thank you so much for joining me today. You look beautiful as ever. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, congratulations on season two on my crime my true crime story on vh1 and you know season two episodes featuring real crimes from across the country do you find that people turn to a life of crime out of necessity and survival or because that's the life they were exposed to at a young age or maybe a little bit of both um definitely a little bit of both but more so out of um desperation i i, I literally was just explaining to someone i haven't seen anybody yeah, that was well off, had money, came from a family that was, you know, taken care of. Just going like, you know what, I'm going to go and scam some people. I'm going to go and try to rob a bank. Most of these people were placed in a situation where their back was against the wall and they felt like they had nowhere else to go to either survive themselves or to take care of their children or whatever. They're, they're, ideal you know situation at hand that they felt they needed help with and there was nowhere for them to go i don't i never so far in season two i haven't seen a story yet where the person was just like yeah i just did it for fun no i haven't seen that yeah it's a, most people turn to a life of crime because they have to their backs are against the wall in terms of necessity but listen to this drug trafficking jewelry theft steroid production counterfeiting it takes all kinds to live a life of crime what a collection I mean, there's a lot of things that can be considered a crime in this country. <laughs> so we we definitely um, had a, a wide range of things to pick from. But um, the the one thing that's you know the same in all stories is that there is a story of redemption at the end. There's a, a turnaround to where they're moving differently now or they had a point where there's like all right this is not what i want my life to be for myself or this is not what i want for my children this is not what i just want in general and 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 they they have this this moment where things start turning to you know to the straight and narrow which is what the i think that's the goal for everybody no one wants to wake up looking over their shoulders dumping you know from the authorities or whatever people want to just be okay and, and i think that's what it's what it's about yeah, as watching the, the first episode last night, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I'm not like, yeah, you deserve that. Good. Go to jail. I'm like, you feel for these people because, you know, it's the Oliver Twist story. You know, it's a Les Miserables. It's like, what are people supposed to do in this day and age when you can't live on a living wage, when you have something that mm -hmm. you get evicted or you need to feed your family? You know, so, yeah, story of redemption. I mean, I felt for these people, some of them. Well, the the story, I think the first, the first episode, she actually... Um, had turned to a life of crime at a very young age. Her her grandmother, had, who was her primary caregiver, passed away. And she literally did not know what to do. A lot of times, you know, as, as a young adult, we think, oh, what's the next party? You know, school, the things that, and unfortunately, sometimes people are placed in situations where they're not able to think like a child anymore. They have these very real and very adult and mature situations placed in front of them like figure out how you're going to eat figure out how you're going to keep a roof over your head and then you know to make matters worse you know when you're out there that young things like teen pregnancy happens now you're trying to figure out not just how to take care of yourself how to take care of this kid when you're a kid so yeah i i've, I've got the same thing that you have there's definitely um sympathy and empathy involved when when you're watching some of these stories and are you active on social media? Do you like to interact with your fans? I do. I do. I'm not as active as people would probably like me to be because I don't want to say I'm private, but I just don't like people knowing where I'm at when I'm at there. So a lot of times I'll be like, oh, I'm going to post this when this is over. And then it'll be over. And I'm like, oh, that was yesterday. <laughs> so I don't post it. But I, I do I do like to um, 
I like to go live. When I'm live, it's different because I know I'm in a setting where it's okay to be live. You know, a lot of times, unfortunately, as celebrities, you can't just post where you're at because you never know what other people's intentions are. But um, when I'm in a setting where I feel like it's safe and I can talk to them directly, I, I love that. That's one of my favorite things about social. Well, going live and being an artist, do you mentor up and coming artists? Do they always seek your advice? Um, People do ask for my advice. I actually get a lot more questions about relationship advice. People think like I have all the questions when it, all the answers to the questions when it comes to relationship stuff. I get a lot of relationship questions and I get a lot of beauty questions like about hair and makeup and clothes and stuff. Really? Like those are, I think, like the top two. Yeah. So we can add marriage yeah. counselor to your long list of accomplishments. And <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'd be pretty good at it. I'm yeah. 10 years in. I got married when I was very, very young. So um, I I've, I've seen you. I guest host on the Wendy Williams show and I just think man you're just a natural talker and a natural influencer <laughs> and I just think you had a great career Thank in being you. a talk show host absolutely I love it that's one of my one of my favorite things to do I totally enjoyed that like just getting up in the morning and picking up my clothes and then talking about the different topics and just bouncing off of you know my great co-host who happens to be my brother who talks more than anybody I know on the planet earth um, yeah, <laughs> well, I, I own about five pairs of shoes, Remy, and uh, looking behind you, you love shoes, so <laughs> you got to look good, don't you? I do. This is, I have another room that's just sneakers, but this is the shoe one. The sneak, I have a real bad, it started out with sneakers and then somehow it morphed into shoes and boots, oh. and now I need another house. <laughs> somehow so I need another house. You look great. Well, congratulations on My True Crime Story Season 2 on VH1. It's always been a pleasure to speak to you. Let's talk again soon. And come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe out there with all those flash floods they're talking about. I don't know how serious it is, but just be safe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Um,